On this episode, we talk with United States Deputy Secretary of Transportation John Porcari about livable communities. Then we visit a new pedestrian bridge across the Missouri River between Omaha, Nebraska and Council Bluffs, Iowa. We travel to Kansas City, Missouri, where it is difficult for pedestrians to cross the Missouri River. And finally, we drop in on the grand opening of the walkway over the Hudson in Poughkeepsie, New York. Stay tuned. We're on the Widow Wilson bike trail talking with John Picari, who's uh, recently become the U.S. Deputy Secretary of Transportation. The Secretary of Transportation has been talking about livable communities. What does he mean by that? Well, uh, the first conversation Secretary LaHood had with me was about livable communities. He is very committed to it. Uh, it's common sense writ large. It means uh, making sure that we're paying attention to communities' needs and on facilities like uh, bicycle and pedestrian trails, making sure we build them, uh, making sure we build complete streets where we have bus stops and pedestrian crossings, and uh, we help the community rather than hurt it with transportation facilities. Making sure that a balanced transportation system, which includes a strong transit component, is part of it. Uh, these all are, are common sense, but haven't always been the policy in the past. Uh, it's very refreshing that President Obama and Secretary LaHood are completely committed to this. Complete streets, uh, it's a term that's been used a lot lately. A lot of people might not really understand what it means. What is a complete street? A complete street means thinking beyond the pavement, thinking about the context. So uh, be, be beyond the actual road itself, uh, do you need bus stops? Are there pedestrian facilities? Is it safe to cross? Uh, is it connected to mixed-use development? Uh, does it encourage uh, the kind of uh, sidewalk uh, interactions uh, that, that, that make communities so interesting uh, and, and, and living in communities so vibrant. Uh, th those th that very careful attention to detail is a critical component. And you were one of the group of the first people to bike across the Woodrow Wilson bike trail this morning. What is that trail and why is it important? I, it, it feels so good, I have to tell you. This is at least the third job where uh, uh, I've been involved in this. and. Uh, uh, there were some dark days uh, when the, uh, there wasn't enough money to build the Wilson Bridge and there was uh, a movement to value engineer, quote unquote, uh, the um, hiker biker trail out of it. Um, we got past that. It feels incredibly good. Uh, it, uh, it will be a spur, I think, uh, to not, not just linking the two sides of the Potomac, Virginia and Maryland, but completing things like the Potomac Heritage Trail, uh, because it'll drive demand, uh, and when people see what an incredible facility this is, they'll make much more use of it. Also, with the bump outs and the telescopes, it's a great view of Washington, Old Town Alexandria, uh, the fishing area in the cove over here. Uh, it's just uh, uh, an incredible experience. Now what, what role can USDOT play in in helping things like this be included in, in other major bridges around the country? Well, first of all, through the enhancement uh, program, the Federal Highway Administration requires states to use 10% of the funding, the formula funding that they get for projects like this. Uh, and it could be used for uh, basically uh, a lot of uh, projects outside of the of the right-of-way line where, where uh, you might need bicycle or pedestrian facilities, uh, bus shelters um, and other facilities. That's something that uh, we believe is a critical part of livable communities. And I should point out that we're working across departmental lines, working with our colleagues at the Department of Housing and Urban Development, Environmental Protection Agency and others, uh, really coming up with uh, some bold new ideas on livable communities. And actually, as earlier this year, I was at a conference where the Secretary of DOT and the Secretary of HUD both spoke. Uh, what, 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 what's the potential when, when you get the different departments actually talking to each other and, and working with each other? How, how can that make a difference? Well, amazing things can happen when we actually talk to each other and, and more importantly, listen uh, to each other. And that's what you're seeing now. And uh, uh, just one small example, the uh, new deputy secretary at uh, the Department of Housing and Ur Urban Development is um, Ron Sims, who has been 
uh, the um, uh, King County Executive uh, in Seattle for 12 years now. He is at a major livable communities uh, initiative. He's been working very hard on transit. Uh, he gets it, and, he, and so kind of from the ground up, he's very familiar with it. So we've been scheming uh, on uh, different ways uh, that we can make our transportation investments, our, our uh, housing and urban development investments uh, much more effective by working together. It's, a, it's an exciting time. Years from now when you know, our grandchildren are out using these facilities, what, what sort of legacy can we live them when we, when we build livable communities? I think one of the definitions of success for all of us is, is 50 years from now if our grandchildren look at these facilities and can't even conceive of the fact that there was a discussion or a debate over whether they should happen. They take it as a given. Uh, that, that they should be there. And they're demanding uh, that we have the best bicycle and pedestrian facilities uh, so that they have options. Uh, there's an awful lot of trips uh, that we can walk to or we can bike to with the proper facilities. That's what this is all about. We're in Council Bluffs, Iowa, talking with Larry Foster, who is the project manager for the Missouri River Pedestrian Bridge between Council Bluffs and Omaha. How did the idea for that project get started? Well, it's a long story, of course, as any great project. It goes back many, many years. But um, a number of years ago, there was a group of folks on both sides of the river came together to plan trails along the Missouri River. As part of that process, which was funded by the National Park Service, um, the trails were laid out, about 80 miles of trails. And as part of that process, a, there was a recommendation that there ought to be a way to get from one side to the other. So one of the recommendations of that design effort was to build a connector between the two sides and it determined was determined eventually that that should be a pedestrian bridge. Now, there's a number of existing bridges over the river, uh, railroad bridges, highway bridges. Uh, did any of them have pedestrian access? Well, they, no, nothing uh, that was specific for pedestrians, of course, they would get, sometimes would get on the bridge and fight with the cars and the trucks. Uh, we did uh, approach the two states' departments of transportation and inquired about the ability to, to hang or cantilever a trail off of the existing bridges, and that was determined that that was not possible. So after running through that direction, we kind of came back to the need to create our own uh, designated pedestrian bridge across the river. Now, once you decided that uh, you needed the, the exclusive ped bike connection to, to connect your, your two trail systems, uh, what do you do then? I mean, where do you, we need a bridge. How, how, where do you go next? Well, of course, it all comes down to there's lots of great ideas. There's not a lot of great funding. And so uh, uh, we went through a period of time where we had the concept of a bridge. We went out and did enough engineering to understand what the costs were. Uh, we were lucky enough that uh, on the Omaha side there was a Nebraska senator, uh, Senator Bob Carey, who was getting ready to re retire from, uh, from the Senate after many years of service. Um, as one of the things he did as he left the Senate was he was able to secure an earmark funding uh, of about just over $18 million uh, to help for the construction of the bridge. Um, that turned out not to be quite enough money and, and we have very philanthropic communities here in Omaha and Council Bluffs and within about a month we raised uh, another uh, about three million five hundred thousand to get us up to the project budget which which always was right around 22 million. And when you went out for bid, uh, did it turn out that was enough? Well, uh, we hired a design team, we went through the process of determining uh, a concept of how the bridge might look. Uh, and we, we did the standard uh, design uh, uh, bid build project, uh, went out for bids, again having somewhere around $20 million. And we had two bids, they were both over $40 million. So this was 2006, it really looked like maybe the project was in severe jeopardy. Um, kudos to Omaha and Council Bluffs and and uh, particularly the politicians on each side, they stood up to the, for the project. Uh, we went back, us, those of us on the design team, we went back and looked at various options and finally decided to do a design build process, which, which had not been done uh, in the state of Nebraska. 
uh, prior to that through the Department of Roads. Um, City of Omaha actually took over the authority of doing the entire project. Uh, went out on a design bid approach. Uh, we were able to get uh, three proposals back within the $22 million budget. Uh, selected the proposal by uh, APAC Kansas and HNTB as their designer and um, moved forward and actually finished the bridge a month early and on budget. So what started out to be uh, a really quite a disaster um, due to d determination and, and uh, hard work and, and some, some pretty smart people in the right place at the right time, uh, we were able to turn it around and, and were able to build the bridge within the budget we had. And you're building a bridge across a navigable waterway between two states. Uh, what, 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 how does that complicate the process? Well, I, I'm fond to say that I, I doubt that there was ever a construction project that could have been more complicated, maybe the big dig in Boston or something. But, but we had regulatory groups, not only the federal agencies with, with authority over the river, and there's many of those. We had state agencies on both sides. We had city agencies on both sides. The initial environmental scoping tour that we had with all the regulatory agencies, we actually had two busloads of people who came to, to do that. So uh, uh, it made it more difficult. Uh, generally, they were cooperative. I think everybody became a little bit enamored with this project and, and the view of it, the, the concept of it, the idea of what it could be for these two cities, what it would look like. Um, a lot of skeptics turn over to be believers and, and among those were, were you know the regulators that we worked with and they were all very cooperative uh, they did what they said they would do when they said they would do it and everything worked out fine and they, we have regulators for a reason what were what were some of the concerns they're dealing with that they wanted to make sure that uh, you know the, the bridge would wouldn't create problems well, there's all kinds of navigable issues. Uh, placement of the piers within the waterway, they had to be strong enough to withstand uh, collision with, with tugboats and barges, and that's actually the design criteria that's used. They have to be high enough to pass the, the barges underneath them. Uh, there's all kinds of issues with um, uh, lease turns, pallet sturgeons, uh, plovers, birds, and animals that, that have, are in danger of some extinction in and around the Missouri River, so we had to do a lot of, a lot of uh, evaluating of the impact of the bridge there. Of course, we had to pick a place that was in the airport flyway, so we had FAA issues about height of bridges and marking of bridges, um, and then just lots of other things. It seemed like there were, there were always uh, regulators that we had to sit down and talk to, but again, at the end of the day, everybody was cooperative. Um, one of my jobs was kind of to be the band leader for all this orchestra and, and uh, there were many players for sure but everybody came together and uh, we had problems, we had issues, they told us what they were, we addressed them, we moved on. Now it finished, opened up a month early, uh, are people using it, do people like it? Uh, it's, it's really exceeded I think anybody's expectations. Um, I, I was firmly convinced that when it was done, it would be seen as an icon for both cities. And it, it, has, it has been that. It is beautiful. Architecturally, it's significant. It's, it's gorgeous at night. We wanted, we wanted it to be as attractive and, at night as it is during the day. It, it has been, however, surprising how many people use it and how constant that use has been, even in bad weather. People get up and they put on snowsuits and they walk across. Uh, and I've, I've met people on the bridge who were skeptics and have said, you know, I'm a big enough person to tell you I'm, I was wrong and it, it's great and I'm bringing my grandkids next week. Um, so the use has really, I think, exceeded any expectations that anybody really had. Uh, it's, it's just been very exciting. It's reinvigorated the trail systems on both sides. and. We have a lot of people from Omaha now coming over to Council Bluffs where the trail system kind of connects maybe a little bit better right now and they're seeing new parts of this city that they've not seen before. Council Bluffs going the other way. So it's, it's kind of drawn the two cities together. Um, it's just been kind of a fascinating process. We're in Kansas City talking with Laurie Chipman, who does advocacy for the Kansas City Bicycle Club. What is it like for 
someone in Kansas City to try to get across the Missouri River as a pedestrian? Well, as a pedestrian, it's, it's a nightmare. There are no safe river crossings for pedestrians or bicyclists at all. And right now, um, we're having a fundraising campaign to try, the, to try to help the city get a match for their CMAC funds that they have to get a bicycle pedestrian trail over the, uh, the Christopher S. Bond Bridge, the future Christopher S. Bond Bridge over the Missouri River. Um, I've been working on this four years and our DOT has not been favorable to getting this this uh, this trail and as we've been working on it the the amount of pedestrians and bicyclists has ris risen in this city and so there's an obvious need and this bridge is downtown within it on an old census figure there's like 13,000 people who live and work within a one mile radius. And that's not even getting into our downtown area because this bridge is a little bit east of downtown. So we can't figure out how they expect to uh, build a landmark bridge and exclude people who are not using cars. So anyway, we've got our, our fundraising campaign and the city is looking for money they need 4.5 million to do this and um, we as of today have twenty thousand dollars in pledges and since we had a newspaper article they're coming in at, at a pretty good quantity so I'd say there's a big demand in spite of what Missouri DOT says there's there's a large demand for more walking and bicycling in this city it's just the government's a little slow on the uptake. Now, if we were to head a few hundred miles up the Missouri, uh, Omaha and Council Bluffs have just invested a lot of money in a new pedestrian yeah. bridge across the Missouri. Yeah. Um, but down here, Missouri seems to, you know, you know, you have to you have bake sales to raise money to <laughs> uh, to, to, to get a, a pedestrian facility uh, across the river. Uh, what's going on here? Well, we're not sure. Even St. Louis has four or five bridges that uh, will allow pedestrians and bicyclists across. And all the towns along the Missouri River who have the Katy Trail, which is our, our um, rail, large rails to trails, it's like 250 miles. Some of them have river crossing bridges that allow pedestrians and bicyclists and we can't figure out why we're supposed to be left out of all this fun so um, yeah and we're very uh, we really are admiring Omaha's new bridge and um, we want one what can I say <laughs> We're talking with Fred Schaefer, who's chairman of Walkway Over the Hudson. What is Walkway Over the Hudson? Walkway Over the Hudson is a not-for-profit corporation, and we own the Poughkeepsie Highland Railroad Bridge, which uh, now has been turned into Walkway Over the Hudson. Walkway Over the Hudson is the uh, renovation of the bridge into a walkway and bike path. Uh, the bridge is 1.2 miles long, It'll be the longest pedestrian bridge in the world. It's a former railroad bridge, uh, that was abandoned in 1974 and it sat here for about 30 years uh, with no one doing anything with it. So about 16 years ago I came up on the bridge, fell in love with the view and at that time the old tracks and rails were still here and it was not being used for anything and we started talking about converting it into a walkway and uh, we've worked on it for 16 years and finally about three years ago we got some serious funding from the Dyson Foundation and we designed and planned the walkway over the Hudson. And today is the day it opened after all those years of work and now people will be able to walk, bike, run, rollerblade, uh, cross the bridge uh, from dawn to dusk without any charge. And when you cross the bridge, you have the most gorgeous view of the Hudson Valley that you can find. There's a 12 miles in each direction. You can see the wonderful Hudson River and the surrounding hills. 
and we think people are going to come from all over the world to see this bridge. It will tie in with rail trails on both sides of the river, so you'll have a 25-mile recreational trail, virtually traffic-free for biking, walking, and uh, running. And uh, everybody loves the view, loves the trail system, and we think it's going to be a big tourist attraction. Now, it took you quite a few years, you know, a decade working on this before you really started getting traction. Uh, what goes into, or the, what sort of organization goes into making something like this happen? Yeah, the first thing we had to do was make believers of everyone. People thought this was a rickety old railroad bridge, but it turned out to be one of the greatest structures ever built. It was built in 1888 and uh, tied the country together. Uh, textiles and manufactured goods were shipped from New England to the West coal and grain to New England, and the country grew and prospered largely because of this bridge. About 50 trains a day crossed it, and that, happened, that went on for about 50, 60 years. But then in the 1960s, with truck traffic and the interstate highway system, uh, the railroad started losing money, and the bridge fell into disuse, and then eventually it was abandoned. Uh, and what we did, we took people up here, showed them the view, showed them pictures of other walkways, and gradually built up momentum. Then we put together a partnership of private foundations, the business community, New York State, the federal government, and the local municipalities. And when they realized that this is a great historic structure, that it should be saved, and that we could make it into something useful, everyone got behind the project, and then everyone decided, let's make it happen. And we got federal funding, state funding, raised about uh, $30 million dollars, and we created the walkway over the Hudson. It was just a miracle project because no one believed we could do it, but the bridge is such a great structure, and the Hudson Valley is so beautiful uh, that people just fell in love with the idea, and we made it happen. Um, what did you have going on earlier today? There were a lot of people out here well, on the bridge. Today was the opening celebration, and we had the formal ceremony with Governor Patterson, because New York State is going to run it as a state park, and Senator Schumer, who's given us a lot of aid through the federal government, came out and we had some speeches, a formal opening uh, for about an hour and a half. And then we had the informal opening in which the local representatives met on the bridge and agreed to uh, conduct the bridge and, and hold it for the people so everybody could enjoy the view. And the communities are going to use it and maintain it. And uh, we had a Pete Seeger was here uh, saying, this land is your land. And we had uh, an opera singer saying, God, God bless America which was really tear-jerking. It was just beautiful. We honored the workers. We honored the firefighters who fought a fire on the bridge and saved it many years ago. And we honored the walkway board of directors who uh, spearheaded this project and made it happen. And uh, now the bridge is open to the public uh, seven days a week from dawn to dusk. And anyone can come out here and walk across it and really enjoy it. And as I said, we think people are going to come from all over to enjoy it. Now that you got it done, what, what what are you going to do now? We have to finish the trails on both sides. Uh, there's a 25-mile trail connection, and some of it is not done. So we're going to push to get the rest of it done within a year or so, and the bridge will reach its full potential when those trails are done. And then I'm going to relax and come up here, bicycle, sit and read a paper, and uh, really enjoy uh, seeing people up here. I've been coming up here for 16 years by myself uh, with small groups of people, but to be able to see the public walk across it and enjoy it uh, will, will be heartwarming to me, and I'm just going to come up here and enjoy it. Uh, city somewhere else in the country has an old bridge; it isn't used anymore. What sort of advice could you give them? Well, get the history of it and convince people that it should be done. And you can come here, visit, and see what we've done with this bridge. And hopefully, you'll be able to do the same thing. Uh, railroad bridges are historic. Uh, they were useful in their times, and we think we can make something useful of them again. And that's what we've done here. People talked about tearing it down. It turned out the cost to tear it down was twice the cost that it cost us to renovate it. So that was a big factor in helping us get it done. All right, let's go. All right. Pushing open the gate. Here we go. All right. Mr. Governor, are you looking at access, pedestrian and bicycle access to other bridges, such as the Verrazano Narrows Bridge? Are those are different conversations where we <laughs> would like to do that in some cases. But we have to go through the same kind of process we went through here to make sure this is what everybody wants and that it will benefit everyone. I have been working over the past year and a half to promote children's health and wellness throughout New York State. 
The cornerstone of this initiative is Healthy Steps to Albany, which teaches our young people the importance of nutrition and exercise. The program challenges children to increase their physical activity by competing with each other to walk approximately six million steps over a six week period. And walking back and forth over this bridge is a great way to exercise <laughs> while enjoying the beautiful views of the Hudson River. And as I look over this wonderful new pedestrian bridge, I am excited about the terrific opportunity this walkway will provide to New Yorkers of all ages. In fact, um, I feel like lacing up my sneakers right now <laughs> and walking over the two and a half miles that it would take to cross this bridge. But whether you choose to run, walk, bicycle, or simply stroll across the bridge, you will find that you can't help but be inspired by the magnificent views of the Hudson River, the Catskill Mountains, and beyond. Visit us on the internet at www.pedestrians.org. today is about is to commemorate you, the people, the dreamers, and the workers. So please do join me in thanking the very, very, very numerous number of people who've made today possible. It was kind of nice. But it was...